Welcome back. It is the Vegas Take Sharp and Shapiro. Glad you could join us. See went also in studio. Also announcement to make, Danny Tarkanian will be joining us in studio on Friday. Uh, of course, his father, the late, great Jerry Tarkanian. So that'll be a lot of fun. Catch up with him, talk a little UNLV hoops with him. And he's also served as a Republican in uh, the state of Nevada, so in Las Vegas. So I look forward to uh, talking with him. We're going to have a good debate. Speaking of guests, I heard a nasty rumor that we might be getting Wayne Newton in studio soon. Yeah, supposedly. Hopefully next week. Is we'll that, have to is wait that real? Yes, yeah, supposedly Wayne Newton is supposed to be joining us next week. I'm, I'm in, we're in talks, so hopefully that'll happen. I do have a bone to pick. Not, not with a member of the media with what they said about UNLV. That's the next hour. That's, that's the other bone I have to pick. We have people every show that do this, and it drives me nuts. They're cowards because they call in, and they bother our producer, Johnny or Ken, and they, they spout off nonsense, and then they won't go on the air. Look up the definition of a coward in the dictionary. That's what it is. If you're listening to me or anyone on the show and you disagree with us, why are you going to – you'd be the only idiot that would call into a show not to call in. That's what you're doing. You're calling in to speak to my producer and yelling at him. He has absolutely nothing to do with my opinions. Thank God. I'm sure he's saying that. But, no, in all seriousness, why are you going to call into a show and then you won't go on the air? You are a coward. Stop calling in. We get that every single day. And I'm tired of it, J.D. It's getting me right in the face. I mean, am I wrong on that? Why are you going to call into our show and then you don't want to go on the air? It's stupid. Here's a guy on the line right now. By the way, the number to call, 257-5396-702, 257-5396. If you'd like to be on the air, this guy calls in all the time. He's not afraid to go on the air. Jim. Jim, thanks for calling in. How are you? Hey, Brian. I'm doing great. How are you, man? Doing good, Jim. What's, What's up, on your Jim? Mind? So, I did not watch the State of the Union last night. I cannot... I can't do it. I don't blame you. Uh, but my question is, uh, with regards to the shenanigans going on in Virginia. Yeah, we're going to get uh, to that. Yep, go ahead. Specifically, the lieutenant governor. Yes. Uh, Fitzpatrick. Jim? What I would like to know is, is the state is the same standard that was applied to Justice Kavanaugh yeah. going to be applied to uh, this Lieutenant Governor Fitzpatrick. Very valid question, Jim, and I didn't really give the rundown, so if you can hang on the line for me, Jim, for a second. Let me just give people a little bit of knowledge in case they don't know what's going on. So, of course, we have the Governor of Virginia, and I shouldn't laugh about this, but it's so ridiculous I am. Uh, you know, in his yearbook picture, one guy with the black face, another one wearing the white cape, which I feel like some of our callers who call in should be wearing at, at times with the stupid things that they say. But anyway, that's another story for another show. But uh, anyway, he's in a lot of trouble. He admits that he made a mistake, and then the next day he's, he appears to change his story. Then we have the Attorney General, Mark Herring, who admitted that he was a black face at a party. And then just hours later, a woman comes forward detailing an accusation against Gov uh, Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax uh, sexually assaulting her back in 2004. So anyway, that's the rundown. Jim, my opinion is the same with Kavanaugh, and I agree with you. I think they should have to go through the same procedures here. That is a very, very serious accusation in regards to, to uh, Justin Fairfax. And as far as this governor specifically goes— Specifically, though, specifically, though, uh, should he be— tried and convicted before any evidence was presented should she be believed above everything else um well, you know much like dr ford was with justice kavanaugh well, uh, the difference being here is that you got a guy trying to get on the Supreme Court, and yes, you got this guy. Who's, you got this guy who's already the lieutenant governor. So, uh, as far as and law goes, become, and set to become the governor if, if Northam uh, resigns. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen, though. I don't think any of these three are, are going to be the. That's just my opinion. I, there's just too much going on here. But it's a fair question. Go ahead, Chris. And, well, to, to, to your, further, to, further uh, she has a credible witness. Yeah. She, look. 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 The deep. Look. Has corroboration. But we, we were kind of ignoring the obvious here. The obvious is they're two separate cases, okay? Obviously because it's a political thing, and, and there's people on both sides of the aisle here that have their interests in mind. We, we want to make it a partisan thing. Or you want to, you know, but the fact of the matter is they're completely two separate things. Now, look, let's, let's say for the sake of argument, though, that it, all things considered, you know, and, and we want to have that ta have that happen where, you know, exactly the same thing happens with with Fairfax that does with Judge right. Kavanaugh. Right. OK, then then if that's the case, then Justin Fairfax is going to be the governor of Virginia. Right. That's true. Because the fact of the matter is this. It's Justice Kavanaugh now. Mm -hmm. OK, you said that, you know, he's put through the ringer and that he was, you know, that he was ostracized. I, I don't know exactly the word you just used in regards to to Justice Kavanaugh. But the fact of the matter is Kavanaugh is on the Supreme Court. 
Okay, so so e- even though there were a, a number, a large number of people that quote unquote believed Christine Blasey Ford in the at the end of the day, it didn't matter. I think all that he's Justin, still, he's still a Supreme Court justice. So all that so ju- I guess you, if you apply that same thing to to Fairfax. You know, he's probably going to end up governor of Virginia, right? Probably. I think all that Fairfax has to say is he really likes beer, and I think he'll be just fine, Jim. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's all he has to say. So, yeah. So, like. <laughs> I think that's all he has to but, say. But, right, I get what you're saying is that, you know, sh- is he going to be put through the ringer like, like Kavanaugh was, right? And he's going to face the same scrutiny, and, and is, is, is there going to be that same type of thing? I understand where you're coming from there, but I just think, when it, you know, it's all said and done at the end of the yeah. day, if, if, th- if things are similar in regards to the facts of this, then Jim, this woman may be believed, let me but it's be, not going to matter. Jim, let me be clear on, on how I feel about these three gentlemen. I hate to call them gentlemen. First of all, the governor of Virginia is a complete idiot. How he gets into office, even if that's not him in that picture, the fact he puts it in the yearbook on his page of a black face and a person in a KK outfit, it shows you his level of intelligence. And how about the people that vote voted him in, number one? Number two, Attorney General Mark Herring has admitted that he was a black face. How he gets in is unbelievable. I think the word is still out on Justin Fairfax. Uh, it is it, it is kind of disgusting, though. I don't know if you heard the well, details. The word is still out. He what she said, he's not she said, of anything. she said that they were making out and it was consensual at that point. And then he pushed her head down uh, to perform oral sex on him. And she said at that point she was gagging and then it's. It put a really bad image in my head, but yeah, anyway, Brian, it's way too early though to start yeah. making judgments in regards to the, you know, yeah, the that, guilt or innocence a, of Justin Fairfax. Yeah. You, I mean, look, you can banner about it if you want, but yeah. it's not. It's way yeah. too early for that. Thank you for the call, Jim. We appreciate it. Great call, Jim. Yeah. All yeah, right, good one. Thank you. Two five seven five three nine six. The number to call seven zero two two five seven five three nine six. Look, I never thought that Bill Cosby would end up going to jail. I was shocked beyond belief that many years later, you know. So you never know. You never know. You can't say, well, just because it happened in 2004, so it couldn't have happened. No, I'm not about to say that, but I'm also going to give Fairfax the benefit of the doubt. It doesn't appear to me that anyone else has come forward with any sexual harassment or anything else. So not to say he didn't do it. All I'm trying to say is we don't know. What we do know is that the governor of Virginia is a complete imbecile, and the attorney general of Virginia is also a moron. And I, I, I'm, I'm not I'm not even – I'm not even – I guess I'll just say it. If you paint your face black – Okay, and try to impersonate an African American. Does that make you a racist? Yes or no? It, it absolutely does. I think it does. And so but, he's but a racist. Brought, then. But Brian, you brought up a valid point. How does somebody get to this point in their political career yes. when you have some type of history where, or you have an episode where you're somehow a picture of you either in blackface or in a KKK costume yeah. is going to is going to surface anywhere? How do you get to? Be elevated to you, governor you know, unless, of Virginia if you have something like that in your past. Uh, unless you're like an actor and you're playing a part <laughs> yes. in a in a some type of play. Like hey JD, some, some live when I first when I first met but you, but other than that, if you, if you do that at, at any point in your life and you take pictures of that, you have no business whatsoever of being anywhere near any type of political office. So JD, when I met ever. you a year ago and uh, you said, hey, you know, we should do a radio show together, uh, so on and so forth. And, and, and that if, was the first thing I ever yeah, said to him. If, the first time I met him, that's what I said. <laughs> well, that's not necessarily true. But let's just say we hung out for a few weeks and I said, hey, JD, you want to take a look at my yearbook? Hey, here's a picture of me and I'm wearing a white cape. Would you still want to do a radio show with me? Would you say, well, that guy seems like a really good guy. I, that's the guy I want to sit across from every day and do a radio show with. I mean, what would you say? Honestly, be honest. If you saw me wearing a white cape or blackface, would you want to do a radio show with me? I mean, it is kind of funny. It's comical, but it's also ridiculous. The people of Virginia voted for this idiot. What would you say to me? If I, uh, Be honest. If I showed you a yearbook and I said, hey, look at me in high school. Aren't I cool? What would, what would, what would be the first thing out of your mouth? This is me as an eighth <laughs> grader. This is me in junior high. <laughs> This is me in my cape. <laughs> this is me in my black face. Here's my Hitler costume. Obviously, just, yeah. I, I I probably would would not want to do a radio show just, with you now. And I'm glad to hear you say that because you would have lost a lot of credibility yeah, if you said no. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I'm totally so okay no, with I'm, that. I'm Brian. Totally, totally fine with it. What were the chances that he was going to say that? That would have been bad. They were pretty. They were pretty uh, pretty slim. But I got a question for you guys. Look, you know, in, 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 in regards to Northrum's reaction yes. to this initially, right when it first came out, uh, do you th- what do you, what do you think the the motivation was for him? Do you think do you think that he was scared given the 
the, the current climate Here's what right I now in America where, Here's you know, what I think. hey, if you're found out to be a racist or you're found I, out that you have stuff like this in yeah. your past, maybe he just initially Here's read out the box. Even, even if, because if there's, if there's a possibility that he's not one of those two people in there, right. maybe he just did it because Chris, the, the or, problem it was is an initial reaction. Uh, affiliating yourself with, with a group that did the heinous things with absolutely no reasoning yeah. whatsoever yeah. is Here, here's it's, what it's I just, think. It's just enough. It's yeah. enough. But for, you understand for, the question I'm I, asking. I, I, yeah. I, I, right? I totally, I totally get it. What do you think, do you think the answer, his motivation was? In the here's what I think happened. I think he's one of those two people in that picture because his immediate response was to apologize. Yes. Uh, that's not a normal response if you didn't do it. You remember whether you did it or not. Then somebody got in his ear, and people that are around him got in his ear, and they said, "Hey, look, there's no proof that that was you, Governor. With all due respect, you don't have to admit that to the media." And then he pulled a Donald Trump, and he lied. And the next day, he said, look, that's not me in the picture. He is a scumbag, okay? He should never be in office again. He is a racist. Go back to your KKK meetings if you want to. Just stay out of office as far as I'm concerned. Let's take some calls at 257-5396. I hope I answered your question, Chris. 702-257-5396. Let's go to James. James, thanks for calling in. How are you? I'm doing well, Mr. What's up, James? How are you? I'm doing good, James. What's on your mind? Oh, man. I... I, first of all, man, I, I just love everything you said tonight. I, I get a kick out of you every night, man. <laughs> Thanks, James. I appreciate that. Uh, um, you know, what I, what I was wondering is, is why is it all these allegations of, you know, rape and misconduct come out so many years later? If it was really that big of an issue, why didn't it come up when it happened? It's a valid question you asked, James, and you're not the only one to ask that. But I will say this. There are a lot of women out there and, and some women that I've spoke to that, that have had some horrific sexual things happen to them. And some of them tell me, look, they're ashamed, you know, and, and unless I, unless you're put in that situation, I am not going to get into their mind and try to figure out why or why they didn't. Yes. In a perfect world, James, I wish back in 2004, if this sexual assault happened, I wish she would have called the police. You know why? Because this guy would have never been in office. But again, you're shamed. People aren't going to believe you, so on and so forth. So I am not, while I understand where you're coming from, look, Bill, we know that Bill Cosby did this to a lot of women. This wasn't just one woman. Think of yeah. all the women that never came forward. In fact, we had one of those women who lives right here in Las Vegas that was on this show a few months ago, and I asked her that same question, James, and she gave me that response. She was ashamed. He's a powerful man. You know, she was afraid and, that nobody would believe her. And I believe that they are ashamed and they're probably afraid to come out of the, re like you said, the repercussions of what could happen. They were trying to ruin somebody's career of, you know, of that statute. But also, wh wh what exactly is the statute of limitations on something like that? Well, if you're asking me the statute, of, he, he's not going to go to jail. I mean, it's 2019. Uh, she's saying this happened back in 2004. Uh, I, I'm going to say this. There is literally no chance that he's going to get arrested for anything. But this could affect his political career. That's what we're talking about. And, you know, and, and in hindsight, if it did happen, I, I, it should affect his career. Absolutely. Because yeah. stuff like that should never happen. Agree, James. We're in agreement, my man. And I always appreciate it when you call in. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. You have a good night, buddy. Yes, you Thanks too. Thanks a lot, James. There, about 15 years ago, Chris Wynn called me a name. Uh, I don't know if I could go back to that. And No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead, Chris. Statue of limitations yes. are gone. Yes. But to quickly answer James, his, his, his question, which was, you know, what uh, it, his question basically, which was, what could what could uh, happen as far as uh, actually the question? I'm not, now I'm drawing a blank. Well, I'll, I'll take another call. All right, okay, we'll take, take another call. Uh, C. Win just had a brain fart <laughs> live on the air, folks. That's what happens. It's live radio. Let's go to Kelly. Kelly, thank you for calling in. Kelly, how are you? Good, and uh, I believe I uh, I called it on my Twitter post that JD would be late today. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly was right. Kelly, right on. That was spot on. Kelly, you know me way too well. <laughs> What's up, um, Kelly? So I've got two quick things I just sure. want to uh, address. One, you just asked Chris when if he thought, you know, wearing blackface makes you a racist. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, then that would apply to, like, Joy Behar from The View, who today announced that she wore blackface. Well, you want me to answer uh, that question? I, I, I'm not going to speak for Chris, but I could speak for myself. I think every situation is different. No, I, I don't think every oh, situation. No, no, I think no, no, no. I you think can't no. Do that. Kelly, I'll answer. I'll I'll say if you wear blackface, okay, it's a racist thing to do. Well, hold on a I second. There are blackout. Is there, there, am I wrong on yeah, that? Here's why I think Chris is wrong because there are some huh? high schools and some games out there where they have blackout games where they wear black everything, and I don't think that has anything to do with the color of your skin. They're just painting themselves. No, that's not what blackface right. is though. Well, black, I, that has I, nothing to do with blackface. I would say I would say a KKK cape is much worse yes. than blackface. We can agree on that one, Kelly, right, yes. but like Joy Behar, she colored her body and wore like an Afro-like wig. Well, I think that's stupid. That's, that's racist. I mean, yeah, if she did is. that, uh, Kelly, if she did that, that's racist. I, 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 then I can, hold on. 
uh, you got in Jim Jim uh, Jimmy Chris Fallon right did the now. same thing. Yeah. Jimmy Kimmel did the same thing. Ted Danson, you know, all these people wore blackface. Sarah Silverman, you know. So, I mean, for them to point fingers at this point, they can't. You yeah, know? you're and right. Uh, they can't. They lose all credibility if they, even because they've done it. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing I want to talk about is. You know, when Kavanaugh was, you know, going up, all the Democrats were all believe all women, you know, a blanket statement. But now they're most Democrats are pretty silent, you know, including the ones that were. Well, then that's wrong, Kavanaugh. Kelly. Then that then that's a double standard. And that's wrong. I don't know which specific Democrats you're talking about. All I, I'm pretty uh, cons- I, I'm pretty like cons- Diane Feinstein, Bernie right. Sanders. Well, what we know about Kavanaugh is he was a big uh, not to go back to this guy. I, I can't stand him, but he was a, a big partier, a big drinker back in the day. Not a ton of credibility back in the day. And a lot of people that were close to him said that of which and I, and I don't believe the guy when he said he as much beer as that guy consumed and he still consumes for him to go out in front of congress and say that he never blacked out and he remembers everything that shows that he does not have credibility kelly now i don't know anything about this guy justin fairfax if in fact he did do this back in 2004 then he's a scumbag i hope in a perfect world he goes to jail unfortunately i don't think we're going to get down to the bottom of it kelly but i no, hope i answered your statute's gone right I, I hope we answered your questions though kelly well, right. I have one quick thing. Sure. We yes. need to know where Squee is. Because <laughs> There's a, he's got a whole – he's got like three or four of his boys true. that that he, that he hung out with, right? <laughs> That's yeah. true. Yeah. Kelly, thanks for calling in. Always always good to hear from you. Let's go to Anthony next. Yes. Let's take Anthony. Uh, Anthony, thank you for calling into the Vegas Take. My man, how are you? Sir, I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. I think that this is all a bitch uh, do about nothing. I think that my favorite president is Jefferson, who owns slaves. But who wrote the Declaration of Independence? What do you mean uh, all to do about nothing? With all due respect, what yeah. are you talking about? What, what is all to do about nothing? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, the blackface thing. Okay. okay. Are you an African American? You know, Four years ago. Are you an African? You know, I don't get it. Are you an African? Yeah, I'm sorry. Are, I'm sorry. Are sir. you an African American? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I find that very interesting, and I'm glad you yes. called in. So you're telling me that you have somebody that is white, and I want your opinion on this, painting yes. themselves black, or somebody? How about somebody wearing a KKK cape? You're telling me that doesn't bother you as an African American? No, I mean, in college, 34 years ago, yeah. everybody says it's not a racist. And like I say, Jefferson, who, because I'm a liberal, so, right. you know, I love Jefferson, my favorite president. I, I hear you. The guy owns slaves, but he wrote the Declaration of Independence. Okay, so I, I, and I, I, that I get that. Have these guys that have these crazy, you know, backgrounds, but are yes. great men. And, we, you know, I blame a lot of the black leaders. Who jumped sure. on a bandwagon and shouldn't have jumped on? Sure, and I and I agree with you. I'm sh- I'm not a big Al Sharpton guy. I've never been a Jesse Jackson guy. But let let me ask you this question again because I'm not sure if yeah. you answered it. You're telling me yeah. you would have no problem electing somebody into office that at one point in their life wore a KKK outfit as an African American. Is that what you're saying? Because I'm no, supp- because we, I, 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 Washington was the same way. I, I, I mean, Oof, people, that sets people, a really bad the of, our, of our history. Our fathers, hey. fathers. Slaves. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you, Anthony. You are of the minority if you actually, I mean, there. I, I, I would be hard-pressed to talk to any African-American that would have the same views you have and you, be okay with anyone wearing a KKK outfit. You might be one in 100,000, Anthony. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised. i got to be honest, man. I'm surprised to hear you say this, Anthony. I mean, you seem like the type of guy, you just don't let anything bother you. You just live your life and let people live their life. Is that right? Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah that's me. That's me. And, and that's you know, fair. I mean, that's fine. I, I race is now, you know, I'm in both form. Right, you know, right. You know, I ain't a Trump guy by a long shot. I hear you. I'm a Reagan guy. <laughs> I got you. Know? you. So, well, Anthony, hey, look. Look, the bottom line is, Anthony, I like hearing different perspectives. You being an African-American, having an opinion like that, it does matter, and I appreciate you calling in and sharing that with us. Thank you very much. All right? Thank, thank you, sir. Yes, yeah, thank you for calling. Interesting perspective, Anthony. You know, yeah. I, I, and to, 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 to answer Kelly's question, I, I kind of agree with her. I think the KKK garb is four times as bad as blackface will ever be. I agree. I, I think, think I think KKK I is way, way over the top. JD and I agree and on that one. There's no question. Be, and there, there's a lot of situations yeah. where, where blackface can be But you're either racist or you're not racist. We're not really talking about degrees of racism right. and what's going on, right? And and, and and to his point that he brought up, and, and you guys talked about his perspective, look, it, it, I find it very difficult to compare societal norms of back in, you know, 1776, as opposed to, yes. you know, 2019, it's a very difficult thing to do. So, you know, try, trying to make the comparisons and say, oh, yeah, presidents who own slaves, 
you know, you well, know, the, I, it, I, I because I like I them and because it, I like some of their their approaches to life. I do it find it though. Doesn't Chris, necessarily mean they're not racist. Yeah, I'll tell you what, if everybody yeah. felt like our last caller, there'd be a lot less violence in the world. I'll tell you that. Still be oh, a yeah. lot of racists out there. There'd be but more people cool be, Yeah. So I, I appreciate Anthony's opinion. We got a couple yes. more callers, then we got to take a break. Let's go to Bob. Bob, thanks for calling in. How are you, Bob? Pretty good. How are you doing? Doing good, Bob. What's on your mind? Great. Well, I, I wanted to talk about those virgins last night. Wait a minute, virgin. No, that's the white you wear when you're at a wedding, right? These are racist. I mean, they, they wore white clothes like white people, right? Uh, hold on a second, Bob. What do you mean? You're, you say virgins? You're saying the women that are in Congress that were wearing white, you're calling them virgins, virgins? or racist? I'm, 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 I'm saying to you that those people made some kind of statement last night. I think it was all the female. I think it was one black guy yeah. wore a white it, suit. Well, it wasn't course, some kind of, of course, statement. There, it there, was of a course statement. There, it yes. was a statement that you have all these females that are in office. Do you have a problem with that, Bob? Well, well, I do believe that form is function, function is form. And I should tell you, young men, you do know the female lubricants like a shark, don't you? I mean, are Bob, you what do you, with all due respect, Bob, to... either you didn't take your medication this morning or you broke out of the psychiatric ward. Are you going to make a fair point or not? Are we really talking about what the uniforms were that the women were in Congress? Do you have a problem with women? What are you talking about? Can you please say something that makes sense? Or I'm going to hang up on you, well, please. Well, every every other thing is a racist moment or a hate. Or something. You know what, Bob? Right? I'm, I'm going to okay. Well, you know what, Bob? Here's what I'm going to say before I end the call. You're a racist. What do you think about that? I think Bob is a racist. The fact that you would call in <laughs> and have a problem with women wearing white no, clothes. Brian, he's, he's trying to downplay the KKK garb by applying it to people. To, to what people were wearing last night Bob, because I'll he probably actually is a racist. Bob, and, but he doesn't what. understand why. <laughs> the women were wearing white, people, because it's a hundred years of uh, women's suffrage. The first hundred years since women, women were able to vote. That, there was a purpose behind the white clothes, and it wasn't had, didn't have anything to do with I, race or anything like that. Why do I feel like if we did an episode of Cribs it, with Bob... And I'm sure, would, it, I'm sure <laughs> it represented freedom, right? I feel like if we had an episode of Cribs with Bob, if we went into his wardrobe, we'd see a couple white capes in there. Why do I, why do I get that <laughs> sense from Bob? <laughs> Bob, thank you for calling. Thank you so much. Hey. Uh, JD, I don't I do not want to short uh, short end the stick. I, I don't want to do that to our caller JD who's next. So JD, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. We're gonna take a quick break and I'm gonna give you more than enough time to uh, to spout out whatever you would like to, whether you agree or disagree with me. Uh, just be a better call than uh, than Bob. That's all I ask. What about Bob? We have people calling in that say idiotic things on a regular basis, and Bob is one of those people. But you know what? We'll take his call until he says something stupid. It took about five seconds, that's all. Anyway, we're going to get to UNLV hoops coming up in the next segment as well. Somebody in the media said something really idiotic today about UNLV basketball. Wow, what a shocker. It's like every day. We'll get to that. We'll get to J.D., uh, not my co-host J.D. We'll get to him as well. But uh, J.D., our caller, we'll get to him. And uh, a couple phone lines open at 257-5396. Again, 702-257-5396 is the number to call. So we'll get to that. We'll talk UNLV hoops, and we'll continue this conversation on the other side of the break when we come back. You're listening to The Vegas Take on the all-new 101.5 FM, 720 AM. K-Dawn.